If you're looking for an easy, totally free way to run retro games on your Windows PC that doesn't require a monthly Patreon subscription to get access to it, and is easily portable to any Windows 10 or 11 PC, Retrobat may be what you're looking for. With Retrobat, you can play your favorite games on a Windows desktop PC, laptop computer, ROG Ally, or even the Steam Deck. You just need Windows. Retrobat utilizes the emulation station front end that is commonly used on retro gaming handhelds, Raspberry Pi builds, and many other such devices. In this video, I'll show you how to install it, copy your games, navigate your way around emulation station, and if you're new to emulation, there is a written guide below to further assist. We'll also check out some games on a few devices so you can determine if it's worth your time. This may just be the kind of thing to share with your friends that enjoy retro gaming. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Retrobat is an application you can download and install to your Windows PC that will automatically configure the emulation station front end. If you're not familiar with Emulation Station, no worries. It's basically a launcher that allows you to select your game and it will take care of loading the emulator for the game and start it. I have chapter markers below so you can easily skip over what you already know and watch those topics that are of most interest to you. As mentioned, Retrobat runs under Windows. We'll check it out on a PC, the ROG Ally, and the Steam Deck running Windows. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can run Windows on your Steam Deck. I'll place a link up above and in the description below for a dedicated guide on how to do that if you're interested. You can install Retrobat to any drive connected to your PC, including your main C drive. However, for this video, I'll instead be using an external SP Armor A60 5TB drive, and for a couple of reasons. First, my internal drive has less than 1TB of storage, and I want to add a lot of games, many that will take up a large amount of disk space. Additionally, I'll also want a drive that can easily move from my main PC to any other Windows machine and just plug and play. Where you decide to install Retrobat is totally up to you, the amount of disk space you have available, and what kind of games you want to play. After plugging in the drive to my PC, there are some files added by the manufacturer that I don't need, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. If we right click on the drive and select properties, we see that the drive is formatted as NTFS, which is fine, but to make it easier to recognize which drive on my machine is for Retrobat, I'll change the disk label to Retrobat and click the apply button. Next, we'll download Retrobat, open a browser on your PC and visit retrobat.org, then click the large blue button to download Retrobat, and again, then click on the download now button. On this screen, again click the Download Now button, and here you can decide if you want to support the developers, which is always a good idea. However, in this case, we'll go ahead and click the No Thanks, just take me to the Downloads link, and click the Download button for the latest version of Retrobat, which is version 5.3 at the time of this video. Below the main download links, you'll also find some Windows dependency files such as DirectX and Visual C++, if your PC is running the latest updates, you'll likely not need to install these files. However, we'll go ahead and download them. Click the download link for DirectX, and we'll do the same for the Visual C++ distribution. Click the download link followed by the region nearest to you, and the download will begin. Now I'll select the three files downloaded and copy them over to the 5 terabyte drive. I'll then create a new folder called redist for the redistributable files should we need them. Then copy the dxwebsetup.exe and Visual C runtime zip file into the folder. Next I'll navigate into the folder and unzip the archive by right clicking and selecting extract all. Then the extract button. With the files extracted you can then go into the subfolder and double click on the install underscore all dot bat file to install the redistributables. Again, this may not be necessary if Windows is up to date. It will take some time, so I'll go ahead and fast forward to the end. Now we can go back into our redist folder and run the DirectX installer. Accept the license agreement and click next. I'm going to uncheck the install the Bing bar option 
then click next and the install will begin. Another thing you may want to do is to download the user's manual.pdf and then copy it to a folder or drive that will be easy to reference should you need it. I'll copy it to the root of the external drive and rename it from notice underscore en dot pdf to manual dot pdf. When you open it in a pdf reader you'll find it has some helpful reference information particularly when it comes to the hotkeys. Now we can double click the Retrobat version 5.3.0 setup file, select your preferred language, or click OK on English, then click Next, review the license agreement, and then click the I Agree button. When prompted for the destination folder, you can leave it at the default if you prefer and have plenty of storage space available. In this case, I'm going to change the drive from C to D, then click the Install button. The installation may take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. The option to create a desktop shortcut is checked by default. You can leave it as is. However, I'm going to uncheck it and then click the finish button. Now we'll get started with an introduction to Retrobat. To start Retrobat, locate the Retrobat folder on the drive you installed it. In that folder, you'll scroll down and see the Retrobat.exe. Double click it and it'll launch the emulation station front end. When it first starts up, the background music is playing. It will be distracting for this video, so we'll go ahead and turn it off. I'll use a keyboard, press enter, then the arrow key down to sound settings, press X to toggle the front end music off, and Z on the keyboard to go back. If your controller is automatically recognized, you can of course use that. However, let's assume we need to remap the buttons on our controller to do that, press enter on the keyboard, select controller settings, then controller mapping, and then on your controller, press and hold a button for a few seconds. Then press the button that matches the image, such as A, B, Y, X, start, select, D-pad up, down, left, right, left shoulder, right shoulder, left analog up, and left, Right analog up and left, left trigger, right trigger, left stick down, right stick down, and the select button for the hotkey. For any buttons you don't have on the controller, you can press and hold a key to skip it. At this point, we don't have any games nor BIOS files. We'll do something about that shortly, but first we need to exit Emulation Station. To do that, press the Start button on your controller and move down to Quit and press the A button. Now that you know how to start and exit Retrobat, in the next segment we'll add our games. Let's discuss how to add BIOS and ROMs to Retrobat. There are two types of files that you'll want to become familiar with. Those are the BIOS and ROMs. We'll touch on each, but if you're new to emulation, check out the guide at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash Retrobat for more details. Pay particular attention to the quoted sections for hints on where to find what you're looking for. BIOS files aren't needed for every emulator, though several will require them and are essentially the firmware used to provide runtime services for a system or console. ROMs are the games themselves. As these files are copyrighted material, I can't provide direct links on where to find them. However, as mentioned, check the guide for some hints that may be helpful to you. If we go back to our Retrobat folder, you'll find a number of subfolders. The two that we're interested in are the BIOS and the ROMs. BIOS files are often available as a BIOS archive that you can download and copy directly into your Retrobat BIOS subfolder. You'll basically unarchive the download and drag and drop the contents into the BIOS subfolder. Now we'll discuss how to add the games. If we go into the ROM subfolder, we'll see a large list of a number of additional subfolders for all the emulators that Retrobat supports. If we double click on the Atari 2600, for example, we can easily add our games by simply dragging and dropping them into the folder. You'll repeat the same step for all the games you want to run under Retrobat. I'll go ahead and do this for various systems and we'll restart Retrobat and take a closer look. Now that we have games added, let's customize the experience. Now that we've added a bunch of different games for various systems, if we navigate to the right, we'll see some helpful categories, including light gun games, 
that Retrobat has scanned from the installed ROMs and automatically categorized for us. If we navigate over to the Atari 2600, the game list looks a bit bland. There isn't any artwork, so let's change that. Press start on the controller, move down to scraper, and there are a number of different scrapers you can select from. One of the best is Screen Scraper. You'll want to create a free account and assign your login and password under the scraper settings. You can also adjust the image source, box source, logo, enable or disable fan art. Typically the defaults will be fine, but you can customize it however you wish. Again, don't forget about your username and password or you may get an error when you go to scrape the artwork. We'll go back and typically the last three options will be fine. However, if you go into Systems Included, you can choose to scrape additional systems. I'll leave it set for the Atari 2600 and select Scrape Now. The scraping process will take some time, so I'll skip past that. Alright, we're back again. The artwork has been scraped, but we'll need to update the game list before we can see it. Press Start on your controller, move down to Game Settings, and select Update Game Lists. Select Yes. Yeah, we really want to do it. When Retrobat returns, we'll now see the images that the scraper found for our games. While we're here, we'll do a quick test using Atlantis, one of the games I loved playing back when I was a kid. Press A to launch the game, and the Start button to start it. When you're done playing a game, press Select and Start at the same time to exit. If we browse the list of games, we can only see 8 at a time. We can change that by pressing the Select button, move down to Game List View Style, and change it from Automatic to Detailed. Now when we return to the game list, we can see far more games on the screen at one time. If you find some games won't launch, it may be because the game is missing the BIOS files that we discussed earlier in this video. To check if a specific game is missing BIOS files, press Start on the controller, select Game Settings, Move to the bottom of the list until you see Missing BIOS Check. When you select that, Retrobat will check to see what BIOS files are missing for the various systems. If the system you're trying to run is listed here, you'll want to locate and download the file or files mentioned into the Retrobat BIOS subfolder. You can completely transform the look of Emulation Station by downloading, installing, and changing themes. When Retrobat was first installed, only a single theme was included, ES Theme Carbon. But there are many more you can choose from. Press Start on your controller, move down to Updates and Downloads, select Themes, and from here you can browse any of the themes you want to download. Then simply select it, and select Install. I'll go ahead and download a few, and then we'll take a quick look at them. To apply one of your downloaded themes, press Start, then select User Interface Settings, followed by theme set. Select the theme you want to apply, and when you go back, the theme will become active. Here's a few examples. If you select a system that has a large number of games installed, locating a specific game can be challenging unless you know a few simple steps. Let's say you know the game starts with the letter G. You can easily jump to the game starting with that letter by pressing select, then jump to game beginning with the letter, and select the letter G. Now we can scroll up and down the list to find the game we were looking for. Ah, Galaga. That's it. If you want to be even more specific, you can press Select, then select Filter Games by Text, and type all or a portion of the name of the game you're looking for. In this case, I'll type in Sonic. Now we'll see only a filtered list of those games that include Sonic in the name. A tool is included with the Retrobat installation called Bat GUI. It's typically not necessary for getting started with Retrobat, but I wanted to make you aware that it's there. There is a link in the resources section of the guide which will take you to the Retrobat wiki if you want to learn more about each of the tools. 
Using this tool, you can make adjustments to the Retrobat INI configuration file, edit your game list, tools for easier integration into Steam, resetting the controller configuration, converting ISO Q files to CHD format, and much more. If you'd like to see a follow-up video in the future, just drop me a comment below and let me know. Now let's take a look at some of the emulators. On the ROG Ally, I went through all the same installation steps that you've already seen from my PC and installed Retrobat to the internal microSD card. You'll want to press the Command Center button and verify that the control mode is set for GamePad. I'll then launch Retrobat from the desktop icon and Emulation Station will start up. We'll begin with one of my favorite arcade retro games under MAME, Galaga. I'll locate it in the list as we've discussed and press A to start. The select button will insert a credit and start to start the game. When you're done playing, press select plus start at the same time to exit the game and you'll return back to emulation station. I've not yet scraped the artwork and metadata for the Wii U. However, we'll launch Mario Kart 8. The CMU emulator hasn't been installed, so you'll be prompted to do so. Select yes, and the emulator will be downloaded, installed, and the game will begin. Launching an Xbox game will also prompt you to install the XEMU emulator. You only have to do this once, and let's check out the game. Oh, hi, Homer. Hey, Bart. Take me to Barney. I'm late for an intervention. You got it. Oops. Get out of the car, man. You drive like I think. For the Steam Deck, I wanted to test the portability of the USB 5TB drive that we set up on the PC. I'll hook the drive up to a dock, and I already have Windows 11 installed to a micro SD on the Steam Deck. There were a few additional steps needed for the Steam Deck to recognize the controls within Windows. There are other options, such as using SWI CD if you prefer not to install the Steam client, but I already had it installed. It's pretty easy to do. Just launch Steam in desktop mode, click the Add a Game link, and select Add a Non-Steam Game. Locate the Retrobat.exe on the external drive, and click Add Selected Programs, and click the Play button. Now Retrobat can utilize the Steam Deck controls. See the guide in the description below for more information. Well, let's check out some brief gameplay on the Daphne emulator playing Space Ace. <laughs> now for some Tekken 6 on the PSP. That brings us to the end of another video. I tried to keep it under 20 minutes and just barely made it. If you want to see more Retrobat content in the future or want to share your thoughts on it, please comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, I appreciate your support by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it's free and I hope you'll consider doing it. With that, <laughs> I look forward to talking with you again very soon.